since Grilled Oak is making whiskey beans with Jack Daniels whiskey, we're going to make the famous Lynchburg Lemonade. We all know Grilled Dog spent a lot of time down there in Lynchburg. So okay, first we're going to get ourselves a shaker. And as every bar needs, we need ice. We have some ice here. Pour some ice in there. Now what we're going to do, first thing we're going to do for our Lynchburg Lemonade, we want two parts of whiskey, any kind of whiskey will do. If you have a shot glass, you just measure two shots. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have one part sweet and sour, which would be one shot. Well, we're making a big picture for the grill pack here. <laughs> and then one part triple sec. Now, because this is has a fruit mix in it, sweet and sour, we want to shake this up. So that's why we have it in our shaker. There we go. And now the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to put it in our shaker. Give it a couple quick shakes. And then we're going to get ourselves a glass. Fill our glass up with ice. Take our lemonade mix. Pour it halfway up with our special lemonade. Then the other half we're going to top off with either 7-Up or ginger ale works quite nice. And there you have it, a Lynchburg Lemonade. Quite tasty. All right, one of the grill packs coming over here, so I'll try this. Get the water out of there. You come on over. Come behind the bar if you like. You were behind the bar before. Yeah. All right, you look like a tight. <laughs> okay, have you ever had Lynchburg Lemonade before? Not as good looking as that one. Okay. And what I do with the ginger? Oh, here it is. The ginger ale. All right, let's give me your opinion. Fantastic. Very good. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Leave a tip. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring my wallet. <laughs> and that's how you make a Lynchburg lemonade. Now. I wish I had an idea for something else to make. What's another good, good? Anybody have an idea for a, a whiskey drink? Oh, it's up over here, sir. Fantastic. Now you're behind a bar. Yeah, how make you an doing? Old fashioned. An old fashioned. Does G Man know how to make an old fashioned? Of course he does. And I just so happen to have an orange and cherries right here on the bar. Isn't that oh. interesting? What a coincidence. First, you need a glass. Get yourself a glass. Sit over here to the side, and we need to slice up our oranges. Doesn't that look like a good orange? So we just slice up the orange. We're just going to make one for now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the rind. We want the rind off. And then we're just going to put the pulp inside the glass. It's like curious, isn't it? Mm. If you like yours extra fruit, I can put another one orange slice in there. That's more than enough. More than enough oranges. Get some cherries. We're going to put two cherries in there. I love cherries. Put more cherries. How's that? There we go. Okay. I lost my bar towel. Every good bar has to have a bar towel. Can someone grab me a bar towel, please? Okay, while they're getting me the bar towel, we're going to move this over to the side. And the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to take what's called a muddle. Behave. Actually, in most bars, it's smaller than this. This is actually something I picked up when I was in Japan. It's for rolling out udon noodles. They were actually good. Yeah, I had udon noodles from Takamatsu City. They're really good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add just a teaspoon of sugar or one sugar cube. Put that in there. And then, now this this is the debatable. Some people just put a little whiskey in there and mix it up. Other people put some club soda on here and I'll set this up over here and spray sometimes. Bill Doe's behind the bar. We'll just put a little bit to moist it up a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to smash this all around in here. You put bitters in there? Oh, I forgot to put bitters in there. I was going to do that at the end. We'll just put two or three drops of bitters in there. Ah, that's good. Alrighty. And now we'll go back 
This is really good if you're angry. Yeah, I can see that. Need to let out your frustration. You're you done. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Once we get this all smashed down in there, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some ice. Oh, could you get me some ice? Sure. Can't have a drink with no ice. That's right. You know what a drink without ice is? Cold dr uh, warm warm drink. Warm yeah. drink. You've been here before. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna top this off with some ice. And we'll get some whiskey. Now you know this drink became popular during Prohibition because the bootleggers' whiskey was so bad and nasty tasting. They had to find some place somehow to sweeten it up. So they tried this recipe in order for people to be able to tolerate it. We can thank them for this. You can thank the bootleggers for this drink. And then we just top it up to the top. Now some people, if it's too strong, they add club soda, but the traditional stone, they just drink it like this and just sip it down there. Some folks even just mix it up with a spoon. I just like it straight like this, but you can just mix it up if you like. There you go, like to sample that one. Bit. Cheers. Oh my god. Good one. <laughs> All right. That's a great well, old fashioned. Thank you, and we'll go back to Grill Dog. Thank you. Thanks, Grill Dog.